Welcome families, pack your bags and join us as we set out on an unforgettable four-wheel drive adventure to the enchanting Fraser Island, the world's largest sand island and the perfect destination for a fun-filled family escapade. In these family-focused travel series, we navigate through ancient rainforest, tranquil lakes and endless stretches of pristine sandy beaches, unveiling the hidden treasures and captivating stories of this World Heritage listed wonder. Along the way we get up close and personal with some of Fraser Island's incredible wildlife. From the crystal clear waters of Lake Mackenzie to the mesmerizing flow of Eli Creek and the haunting beauty of the Mahino shipwreck, we experience some of the best what Fraser Island has to offer in our four-wheel drives. I show you whether Dave and Kylie in the mighty Y62 patrol and myself in the 105 cruiser make it through Ningala rocks without getting stuck. I even managed to find two incredible new places I hadn't been before. So strap yourself in and get ready for the ride. We decided to take two and a half days to get from Sydney to Fraser, as I also wanted to catch up with my good friend Dennis Battelle and his lovely wife Jeannie for coffee and a good chat. We left on the Easter Saturday, so it was very hard to actually find some reasonable accommodation for a night of sleep. However, we did find a little motel here in Grafton, which was normally priced. We had an early night and after seven hours sleep we left at six o'clock in the morning. I have been testing the Safeguard waterproof restraint tarps for the past 12 months and they have helped quite a bit to keep my camping gear and the open cage underneath reasonably dry and protected from the elements. In addition, the 1000 kg safe working load made sure my top load is always well secured. My lovely wife always complained that I had never taken her to Byron Bay, which personally I think it's pretty overrated. So this was a good chance to drop into Byron, have a quick look around, uh, early morning coffee and then make our way towards Queensland and Dennis Battelle's home. We enjoyed the afternoon with Dennis and Jeannie and the two of us as usual ended up in front of the computer and Google Maps looking at uh, the desert and for certain locations. I have been experimenting with a variety of GPS navigation apps to find the best fit for my needs. Despite many challenges I encountered with Explore or Traveler, especially EOT losing GPS signal during track logging and only showing straight phantom lines, I decided to give it another try on my trip to Fraser. I typically rely on Google Maps when on road for real time traffic updates. So in this test I did navigate via Google Maps in the foreground but had the latest version of Explore or Traveler, Memory Maps for All and Dirt Maps in the background recording the track. As I have previously observed, EOT is again the only app that experienced GPS signal loss and displays a straight phantom line as a track log. As you can see here, Memory Maps for All has no issue recording the track log while in the background and I did run Dirt Maps as well just for reference and Dirt Maps also had no issue to record the track log correctly in the background. So I don't know what issue Explorer or Traveler has in losing the GPS signal and not recording correctly but it is ongoing for quite some time now and is really an issue if you like your track logs. We managed to find a hotel on Easter Sunday in Gympie for the night and then plan to leave the next morning around midday towards Inskip Point. We're reporting to also air down the camper trailer. Same pressure, tire pressure than your towing vehicle. It's on about 43 now and we're going to try and get it down to 19. So let's do this. And even with the camper trailer, we didn't get bogged at Inskip Point. If you want to know why I've never been bogged in 11 years of sand driving, check out my sand driving video. 
We arrived at Inskip Point at Easter Monday, so the traffic from the island back to the mainland was big, as you will see a little bit later. However, there were very few cars actually leaving the mainland towards the island. On this trip, we plan to meet on Fraser with two other families, Carrie and Natalie, with three of their kids, Peter, Elise and Georgina, who were already on the island and arrived on Sunday. And then Dave and Kylie with their kids Hendrix and Layla who would arrive the day after us. We all had booked the upper campground at Wadi Point. Dave and I both had our camper trailers hooked up for a week's stay on Gari. It always has been very important to us to expose our children and now teenagers to camping and outdoor experiences with family and friends. We think it's vital for their holistic growth, fostering a deep-rooted appreciation for country and promoting essential bush and life skills. Engaging with the outdoors cultivates curiosity, creativity, resilience and a sense of responsibility and appreciation towards country and allows children to get away from the digital world, iPads, TVs and computer screens. Additionally, camping fosters teamwork, communication and problem-solving skills as children learn to navigate unfamiliar situations. Ultimately, these experiences forge lasting memories, strengthen bonds and contribute to a well-rounded and resilient character, empowering kids and teenagers to face the challenges for the future with confidence and adaptability. It didn't take too long until we saw the first car and camper trailer bog down, again due to insufficient low tire pressure. I'm just amazed there is so much information out there, but people still don't manage to air down sufficiently. There's no issue towing a camper trailer on Fraser as long as you air down your tow vehicle and the trailer. This is Eli Creek in the afternoon at low tide and it sure was quite busy. The Indian Head Bypass is certainly a spot where you can get stuck, especially with a camper trailer. The sand is very soft and often the bypass is very bumpy with a lot of holes. You really have to pick your line here. The left hand side had some unexpected, very deep holes and you see me bouncing around there. I was glad to have good suspension. So the tarp here has served us quite well. No rain and nothing. And it keeps all that stuff dry. Easy unhitching now. It's already on the leveling ramp, so all of that is done. We just push the button in. Now. And that's it. Yep. Easy as. Yes. Oh, the Nebo light. Very bright. I mean, look at this now. That's a normal spot. And now have a look at this. I don't know whether you can actually see that, how far that goes.
I used the light quite a bit on the trip. It's actually quite helpful to keep dingoes away because I don't like that bright light. Um, obviously these 1.6 uh, kilometer uh, spot beam could be very useful for search and rescue and the likes. And the flood beam is great to giving a lot of close-up illumination. 1.5 kilometers. So you see that, the dune there? Unfortunately, there are a lot of dingo attacks at the moment. There were four attacks uh, within the last four weeks and two while we were there on Fraser. Uh, if you walk at night, dingo stick. Uh, you get them at the campground. And we already had a few dingoes here. So There are also quite a few cane toads around. A lot of them fortunately squashed on the track. The Blue Eddy panel. Fraser Island here and feeding in. 144 watt, which is a 200 watt panel, but it's not, it's only 10 o'clock in the morning here. So I think it's not too bad. And there's also some stuff running on here. So, 143. Fluffy didn't eat all the food she gave him. Hi. Hey. Hello. Welcome back to our YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Today, where are we guys? Chee Chee <laughs> Lake. Lake. At Fraser Island. In Fraser Island. <laughs> all the parents are in. <laughs> and what a kale. What a bean. Uh, no. Nah. <laughs> Whoa, this is like actually far away. So yeah, currently we're just here chilling out in the lakes. We went on the rope swing, um, got a leech attached to our skid, yeah, and, we went yeah. and then heading off later to the beach. Oh, I don't know what happened to you. Too many cities. And go. No, three, two, two one. Oh, oh, let go. Yay. Well done. Yes, Emma. Wait. Everyone's gonna knock. Push yourself off that tree, exactly. Is it cold? No. Woo, you're like a monkey. Go Yay. Go. Well done. <laughs> Honey, you're in the water. Oh, Come hey. on. <laughs> no way. Check out what the kids found. Processionary caterpillars are weird, hairy, grub-like creatures. The larvae of these insects follow each other in chains of individuals head to tail and are known as bag shelter moth. Each caterpillar is covered with millions of long, fine hairs that are very brittle and sharp. In most people, these produce a highly allergic reaction so I would not recommend touching him. After Ocean Lake, we decided to have a look at Ningala Rocks and see what shenanigans are going on there at the time. Ningala Rocks is the access point to the northern part of Fraser Island and it can be fairly soft. However, with correct tire pressure, no one really should get stuck there, but it's always very entertaining watching the people drive it with too high pressure and getting stuck. Ocean swimming is not recommended on the east coast, so we always had someone on shark watch. Hey guys, welcome back to our YouTube channel. Currently we are at a beautiful location and we found a little cave that we're gonna cross. North in. of Sydney in Fraser Island. Ooh. Now, we've just come to this cave and look what we have found. Okay, we're gonna crawl in. Crawling in, oh look around. Ooh, ow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stuck. 
There's a beach. What? Oh, can I get it? Oh. Hello. Oh, fudge, keep on moving. Keep moving. Keep crawling out. Oh Look what we've got. Ow! <laughs> I think I just broke the rock with my pocket. <laughs> I just broke the rock. I saw it. Voila! Where'd you come from? <laughs> so that's the beach for ya. After Nigala Rock, we decided to go to Champagne Pools for a little splash there. That's one of the reasons why I like to stay at Wadi Point. Even at high tide, you have always access to Champagne Pools, Ocean Lake or to Orchid Beach. This was at low tide. Champagne Pools is definitely more interesting just shortly before high tide. Hey Peter, Peter you know that game? Get the red? Oh, oh. <laughs> found kind of another hole here but thought that may be good. On the other side of Champagne Pools you have this narrow channel which really pushes the tide in and out. It's good fun to play in it because it works a bit like a slide. However you have to watch it you don't get dragged across the rocks because that does hurt. If you follow my channel, you know I love my ice cream. So after Champagne Pools, we decided to go to Orchid Beach and have an ice cream. Yes, it is very expensive. I think it was $8 for a Magnum. However, it also is the most remote shop on the island. It takes the longest to get the goods there. And we always like to support uh, the local economy. They also now have a kind of barista coffee machine and make actually very good coffee, which is reasonably priced. In the next episode, we explore parts of Fraser's incredible west coast and find some hidden treasures like Tunnel Creek. I have a chance to also test my laser 7 inch Sentinel driving lights. We have a quick detour to Little Champagne Pools, the Mahino Shipwreck, and Lake Mackenzie. We further make a trip to Sandy Cape, finding Gala Rocks, so check out if Dave's big Y62 patrol gets stuck. So guys, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please keep in mind, this is a self-funded channel, so I would greatly appreciate if you could help me out by sharing, liking, and subscribing. And if you can, please consider head over to Patreon or buy me a coffee and with the equivalent of a cup of coffee or two per month, you can really help me making these videos. Thanks a lot for watching and see you along the tracks. Bye.